test cut Kayla Harrison. So, what in the hell does that mean? Now, there's not very many things in life. There's not very many sports. And I only know of one profession, it happens to be this one, where if you try to put somebody on a scale before you let them go to work and you don't end up in a federal courtroom, right? I mean, this is a very weird thing. None of you could relate to it. If your boss tried to weigh you in before he let you go do your job to earn a paycheck to feed your family, you would sue him and you would win. It's a very unique situation. Football players. The entire front line that is fighting heart disease and heart attacks from eating salt and table butter does not get on a scale before they go out there. They just walk out there. And tennis and golf and swimming and so on and so forth. Very, very few things, very, very few sports where they weigh you in before you're allowed to participate. And Kayla Harrison comes from one of those sports. And therefore, I would never give her a hard time or question her about that process. She lives in that world. I read diet books. I have to hear from doctors about dehydration. I, I can't even tell you the level of annoyance that I go through with that. If you ever go into the emergency room for and you can have a broken leg. It won't matter. They will put an IV in your arm. And they'll tell you you're dehydrated, and they'll bill your insurance, and your insurance will pay it. It's complete fraud. It is a scam. In your entire life, you are highly unlikely to ever become dehydrated. In a doctor's entire career, he's highly unlikely to ever meet a person who's dehydrated. But he will diagnose 100% of his patients as dehydrated. Now, I only bring that to you because how would you get that way? Are you in the desert? Is it so hot where you are? Do you not have access to something to drink? You're not just dehydrated. Were you thirsty? If you aren't thirsty, you aren't dehydrated. Okay, let, let, just, let Dr. Chael tell you. I don't need to test your blood. I don't even need to see the color of your urine. If you tell me you're not thirsty, I will let you know you're not dehydrated. It's a very hard thing to do. You have to want to do it or find yourself in a very tough and threatening situation, such as stranded in the desert. Okay. I tell you this because Kayla Harrison weighed 145 pounds for the last time when she was a junior in high school. She was 17 years old. Now, that is a quote from Kayla Harrison in 2020. Since then, she actually went to 145 pounds. She left the PFL where she was exclusively signed. They allowed her to go to Invicta to have a fight, but the point in Invicta was to make the weight for Kayla. That was the motivation and the drive, not the competition itself. There was more opportunity. In fact, nearly the only opportunity was at 145 pounds. If she, Kayla, wanted to hit the free market and test herself, she'd have to have somewhere else to go. Amanda had a level of interest, right? Like, these aren't blockbuster fights, but if you're in Kayla's mind, Amanda versus Kayla has a level of interest. And Kayla versus Cyborg, again, these aren't blockbuster fights, but that is a level of interest. And one was in the UFC and one was Bellator. So I'm just sharing for you, if you're Kayla and you can get to 145, when your contract runs out where you're at, which in this case was the PFL, and you want to go to the free market, you've now got options. So it's very important that you get to 145 pounds, which she did. Did a great job. I can only imagine how hard that would be when she was in the Olympics. I believe it was 172 pounds. It might have been 174 pounds, but I know it was 170 something. The weight class. The weight class where she won her second gold medal. So to be smaller, I mean, just to make 155. She's got to be roughly 20 pounds smaller than she was in her athletic prime. Do you know how difficult that is? Do you know, the physiological change, the mental toughness that Kayla showed to get to 155 pounds, and then the absolute drive of commitment that she showed as an athlete. And yes, there was a businesswoman in there. She, she wanted to be able to negotiate, but there, there was also an athlete where she could be recognized as a world champion. She didn't get to 145. 
And she said herself, that's not going to happen. That hasn't happened since I was 17 years old. She did it. She did it. She then signs the Ultimate Fighting Championship against one of the greats ever, Holly Holm. Holly Holm does not get enough credit. She will someday. When the Holly Holm story is finally told, when it's done, when everybody can stand back and look at what that girl has done. Oh, my God. I mean, th that is a first ballot Hall of Famer all day, but... Set that aside, it then gets announced that's at 135 pounds. Whoa, that changes everything. That completely changes everything about that fight. There is really no way to know how Kayla's going to look at 135. I mean, physically look where the strength will be, how the speed will be, how the conditioning will be. That is an athlete in a body that you, we, have never seen, quite simply. I don't just mean fight it. We've never seen that body, that athlete, that human weigh 135 pounds. So Kayla has reported that she has done a test cut and that she can make 135. And if this was somebody else, I would give them a very hard time. I mean, I'd want to know what that means. Like, that's not an actual expression. If I went and typed that into Google, so what does test cut mean? It will not tell me anything. There is no dictionary I could go to. There's no doctor I can call. But I, being in the industry, I do know what it means. It means you're testing the weight cut, right? Just like you go to practice in your sport, you practice fighting to get a pretty good idea of how you can do in certain realms. And... It is a massive drain on the body. I do not believe that she cut down to 135 pounds and then took 20 hours to recover and went and did three rounds hard. That would be what you would do in a test cut situation, just so you do understand. It's called acclimation. There's an Olympic aspiring wrestler right now in America named James Green. He just did that. He made the weight class and then went and did a practice two hours after he made the weight because that's what he would have to do in competition. So if Kayla was to do a test cut, it would have to have two ingredients. First, 135 pounds, and two, three hard sparring rounds after 18 hours, 18 to 20 hours of recovery. That is what an acclimation would look like. And I don't believe them. There you go. I don't believe that happened. Tony Ferguson did something along these lines. He, he just made the wait for the Khabib fight, but he's been teased to this day for doing it. I have no problem. I'm not one of the people that teases Tony. I'm just sharing for you. He did get teased because it's not done. It's just not how that is done. My teammate, rest his soul, Evan Tanner, did one of these down to 185 pounds when he used to fight at 205 pounds. Evan, great, went on to be a world champion 185. But when he did his test cut, he wanted to get within seven pounds. Seven pounds, he was very confident, so he got down to 192. And I'll just share for you, it was a weird thing to do. It was a weird thing to do at the show. What, what are you doing? What are you cutting weight for when you have no fight coming up? But it just, mentally, he just wanted to try this. Make sure he could get within striking distance. So, I share that for you because I could see where Kayla would have tried to get down into striking distance. I just don't know what that means. For Evan Tanner, what I was there for and witnessed, it was seven pounds. It was a weird thing to do when he did it, but, but he needed it. And he went on to become world champion. So, you don't question things like that. You learn from guys that become champion, right? But Kayla is a two-time Olympic gold medal. I don't believe she made 135 pounds. That would just be a very, very strange thing to do. And if you did do it, it's something you would document, like Tony did. And maybe you'd get teased about it. Maybe you'd use it for proof that you could do it. But either way, be a meaningful part of your life. When you guys see fighters retire, and if you're boxers and you're boxing fans, bring them into it. When you see them retire, they will tell you it's from a physicality standpoint. I can't do this anymore, or I've achieved what I want to achieve. The number one reason that an athlete in combat retires is he doesn't want to make weight anymore.
that number one, and not even close, there is not a close second. You'll talk about I've slowed down, or I don't want to do this, or I've done everything. I've achieved it all. I want to spend more time with my family. I want to try new things in life. I'm worried about CT. You've never heard, I don't want to beat the scale anymore. You've ne no one, never have you heard that. It is the number one reason the fighters retire. It is the number one reason that a judo player leaves judo. It is the number one reason that a wrestler stops wrestling. They don't want to deal with that scale. So to make 135, which will be the toughest cut of her life, I believe if she says she can do it as a professional in this sport, she'll do it. I don't question she can do it at all. As far as what a test cut means, has Kayla Harrison in her adult life weighed 135 pounds? There is not a chance that that happened.